Hey everyone, Hammer Dan here with Hammer Performance. So today we're going to show you how to spot check your push rod length uh, when you're putting a big bore kit on the bike. If you've gotten a package from us, um, a horsepower package or whatnot, or you've done any other work to the bike to where you need to check push rod length. Um, we like to use fixed length push rods in all of our builds. That way when you put the motor together, it's a one and done deal. You don't have to go back in with adjustables and, and uh, um, you know, readjust your adjustable push rods. You know, a uh, collapsible push rod tube has, you know, potential for other leaks in the bike uh, when you run a collapsible tube or whatnot. You know, adjustables make it easy. You go ahead and adjust them, set everything up properly, and, and you're there. But we feel that we can do the math, figure out exactly where we need to be uh, push rod lengthwise for fixed length so that it's a one and done deal. You put the bike together, you're off and riding, and you don't have to worry about it again. So, with that being said, um, we're going to talk a little bit about lifters and uh, what we're looking at in a hydraulic lifter. So, in a hydraulic lifter, uh, you have a plunger and a spring inside that lifter. And out of that lifter, that plunger and spring, we have about 200 thou of travel of that spring and plunger travel. In that 200 thou of travel, we say in a perfect world, we'd like to set up our push rod so that it sits halfway down into that plunger, about 100 thou down into that lifter. So we're halfway down our travel of that 200 thou. We normally say 50 thou up, 50 thou down from that 100 thou center point. We're still within good operating range. I like to say, hey, listen, if you're on the outskirts of the 50 thou one way or another, if we're at say, um, if we're at say 60 thou of our preload, or we're at 140 thou somewhere in there that we should go back and revisit our length and try and get it a little closer to that 100 thou center mark. So what we're looking for is 100 thou down into a hydraulic lifter um, that puts us in the center there so that, uh, um, um, and then if we're gonna err one way or another, we'd like to err a little bit deeper. So maybe 110, 120 thou into that lifter rather than shorter. Um, I don't think it really, really matters, but if there was a, hey, which way do you want to err? We'd like to err a little bit deeper into it. Um, gives us a little tighter spring pressure there with the plunger and the spring underneath the plunger uh, to help uh, control that, that uh, push rod and, and rocker arm and whatnot. So um, in a perfect world, we'd like to see 100 thou down. <clears throat> but we're going to show you how to go ahead and spot check your push rods to make sure you're within that operating range. This is very, very important. Like I say, if you got a package from us, we want to make sure, and I got to be honest, sometimes there's, you know, there's, there's different measurements out there. And so, you know, spot check us to make sure that what we sent you is right. We do the math to try and get as close as we can, but you know, we're not perfect either. So uh, we want you to spot check and make sure that it puts us right in that sweet spot, right around that hundred thou mark, plus or minus 20 thou one way or another. So, okay. Um, we need to go ahead at this point. Um, you should have got push rods from us, fixed length push rods. You're going to have two different lengths. You're going to have intakes and exhausts. The intake push rods are always going to be your shorter push rods. Your longer uh, push rods are going to be your exhaust. And they're marked on the push rod, laser engraved. You can see the markings are the laser engraved there on the push rod, um, the different sizes there. It's kind of a little hard on these. Uh, um, exhaust and whatnot because it's not great as dark so um, we're gonna need a long and a short so take your longs and short double check triple check make sure your long one is gonna go into your exhaust your shorter one is gonna go into the intake okay now granted you're gonna have your bike in a lift and and you'll have the frame around it and everything with the rocker boxes off um, so kind of the same concept here this just gives us a little better view of what we're doing here and what we got going on um, so again, your exhausts are going to be, or your intakes are going to be your two push rods or tubes that are the closest to the center of your cylinders. Your exhausts are going to be on the outside farthest away. Okay, so exhausts on the outside, longest push rod is on the outside. Your shorter intake push rods on the inside. That's very, very important. Otherwise, we can cause some havoc in the motor if we get that wrong. Okay, so at this point, when you get the long and the short in there, we want to go ahead and rotate the motor over to top dead center on the compression stroke. This is very, very, very important. Top dead center on the compression stroke. You have overlap, uh, top dead center, and you have compression stroke. Okay, we want to make sure we're on the compression stroke. So with that being said, if you have the bike in the lift, a lot of you will have the bike jacked up. Um, you're going to want to rock the rear tire and shift 
back and shift it up to get it into fifth gear by rocking the tire back and forth. Make sure you're in fifth gear there. Take your spark plugs out. Make sure you don't have the spark plugs in. It'll make it easier to rotate the motor over. Okay. And then you're going to want to, you know, a lot of times it'll take two people to do this. If you have somebody that can kind of help you a little bit, especially on the front cylinder, since you can't kind of get to the rear tire and see while you're trying to rotate uh, spring pressures, um, you know, rotating it over and whatnot to get it to top dead center to check this. So <clears throat> we are going to use a wrench and we're going to go ahead and rotate the motor over off the motor sprocket shaft. Okay, rather than having it uh, having the rear tire and whatnot since of our setup. So a lot of times what I like to do is keep my finger on the intake push rod, the closest one to our V here, while I'm rotating the motor over. And what we want to see is we want the intake push rod to go up, go up, and go down, just like that. So what's happened there is our is our lifter and cam has pushed the push rod up and opened the intake valve and then closed the intake valve. So top dead center after top dead center on the compression stroke is the piston all the way to the top after our intake valve opens and closes or our intake push rod goes up and goes down. Intake push rod goes up and goes down, piston all the way to the top, we're on top dead center on the compression stroke. Piston all the way to the top after our intake valve opens and closes or the intake push rod goes up and goes down. Now, I suggest using a zip die, cut off the end, or a McDonald's straw, something like that to go ahead and reach into the spark plug hole so you can feel that piston. Okay, we can say, okay, so there's the piston right there. So we're gonna continue to move this piston up We can feel it coming up, coming up. Okay, and then it's coming up, coming up. And then we feel it going back down. So I'm gonna back it up once I feel it going back down. Kind of go back and forth a little bit. Now it's going back down. Right there. So, and you, it's not perfect, doesn't have to be perfect, right? Our cam lobe is nice and round on the bottom side. So we got a little bit of play there back and forth on, our top, on the bottom side of our cam lobe as, it's, as, it's, as the, the lifter's rolling on that back side, okay? So it doesn't have to be super, super accurate, but you wanna try and get it as close to possible to where you think that you're sitting right on the bottom side of that, of that cam lobe there, okay? And you can go back and forth a little bit by jockeying the rear tire, you'll feel the piston go down, go forward a little bit, you'll feel it come up, and you just wanna back and forth it until you think you got it to where it's all the way up to the top. It's not super critical here, but we wanna get it as close as possible so that our check that we do is accurate here when we do our we do our check. So when we think we got it there, we're all the way up to the top. On our compression stroke, we're gonna go ahead and set our rocker box assembly onto um, the push rods. We're gonna grab our four big bolts, okay? And we're gonna go ahead and stick our four big bolts in. We're gonna make sure our gasket here, we're gonna make sure we get our bolts in our gasket gasket is proper there and we're going to go ahead and start finger tightening these four big bolts. Now sometimes we get goop on these four big bolts and we can't finger tighten them really really well. So if that's the case and we can't actually finger tighten them just to tighten things down like on here so what we're looking for here, and I got one that's kind of finger tight in that, and we'll loosen these. You can rest your hand or push your hand on the back side of this. We just don't want it moving around. And our goal here is to let our rocker box assembly sit at an angle down on the head on the, on the left hand side of the bike over here. We want it to sit down on the head on the gasket. We gotta have our single layered steel gasket in there. And we're resting on the top of our push rods, the rocker arms on the top of our push rods. So we're sitting at an angle here, a slight angle with the rocker box like this, okay? That's gonna allow us to take a measurement here of our gap that we have between the gasket and the, the rocker box assembly here. We have, this, we have this gap in here, okay? That we're gonna go ahead and measure. That's our goal there. So 
slightly finger tight the back side to hold it down flush on this back side and resting on the push rods on the front side you can see we can kind of pick it up there we just want it resting there we can just and you don't want to snug these to where you actually start collapsing it the back side here is the key to make sure we're we're snugging the back side down but again we got to be very careful here that we don't start pushing our push rods down into our lifters okay lifters have to be all the way pumped up and they'll do that by just sitting for a while so we got to sit at an angle sometimes you can just rest your hand on the back side and hold it in place and take the measurement okay if you think that's accurate enough for yourself but we're going to take our take our caliper here and we're going to zero it out and make sure we're at zero okay and then what we're going to do is we're going to come in here and we're going to measure from the bottom of the rocker box we're going to measure from the bottom of the rocker box to the top of the gasket there and as you can see there we pull that out and we're at about 86 thou okay we're, we're, we're within our operating spec. Like I say, perfect world, we'd like to see 100,000. Now, this isn't a super accurate measurement, okay? We're just spot checking here. What you're really spot checking for is to make sure that you're not on the weeds somewhere where we're at 155 or 148 or, or you're, at, uh, you're at 60 or, or something like that. Then we need to revisit our length and, and adjust accordingly to get it right. What we're looking for is right around that 100,000 mark. We're sitting at about 14 thou a little short on this. I'm okay with that. I, I, I think we're fine there. Um, if I wanted, we could go back and we could go ahead and readjust and maybe add, you know, look for push rods. Now, you know, here's the deal. We have multiple different length push rods, but we don't have them in real small increments. So we're going to have a variables between the different push rod lengths that would, could be 20 thou, 25 thou, 28, 30 thou, somewhere in there. So you know being 14 thou one way or another hey we're good you know we're i would say run it you know that we're, we're good to go there so we're looking at about 14 thou on the short side from from a hundred thou center point that's pretty good when we're dealing with a 50 thou fluctuation one way or another and, and being still okay there so i'm considering this good now you can go ahead and rotate the motor over to top dead center on the compression stroke on the other cylinder as well put the push rods in go ahead and check it if you've got work from us, it should be very accurate and it should be the same. We set up the heads the same, set up the combustion chamber, deck the same amount off the head if we're doing head work and everything as well. So um, we should be good there. You want to spot check the other one as well, the other cylinder and piston or cylinder and, and head and whatnot as well. Go ahead and do that to check your push rod length to see if you're getting the same number or right in the same ballpark. Okay. Perfect world, 100 thou. You know, if we want to get super anal, we could try to look or have custom ones made and yada, yada, yada. If you wanted to get super, super critical, if you had an adjustable push rod before putting the tubes on, you could check this by rotating over the top dead center on the compression stroke and putting your adjustables in, tightening down just the four big bolts on the rocker box assembly so it's flush, and then putting your adjustables in and making sure you're at top dead center on the compression stroke and picking up all the slack on your adjustable. So you pick up the slack. You don't want to be careful to open it too much to start going down into the plunger, but open up all your slack, lock down your adjustable, both your intake and exhaust, picking up the slack, taking off your four big bolts, taking your adjustables out, and then getting a long caliper and measuring the length, the, uh, the length of each push rod, your intake, and adding 100 thou to that, and then measuring the length of your exhaust and adding 100 thou to that. Now you're spot on, dead nuts, perfect, 100 thou down, okay, from a, opening up your adjustables to pick up the slack in there, and then adding 100 thou to each one of those to get you that 100 thou preload down into the lifters. So again a quick way to spot check we highly recommend anybody that's getting a horsepower performance package from us that you need to spot check the push rod length just to double check to make sure that the ones we sent you are right okay um, if for whatever reason we get something wrong we need to correct and make sure we get it right and we get the proper ones off to you um, we do the best we can on our end to make sure it's right so again there you have it that's how to quickly spot check your push rod length and hydro with hydraulic lifters Okay, um, if you have any questions or comments in or anything, shoot them down below. Uh, click on the button up at the top in the corner there to uh, 
to uh, subscribe or follow or whatever it is to get the the reviews or whatnot of the whatever it is to to make sure you're getting the videos when they come out whatever the hell it is they told me i forgot i don't know what the hell it is but anyways it's up in the corner notification yeah notification that's it notification up in the corner here so <clears throat> guys behind the scenes alex videoing ross making sure i do things right <laughs> so laughing at me when i screw up and everything else but Josh, everybody wanted yeah. to see who who's behind the scenes as you can see here we are <laughs> three-man marching band so anyways so like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, subscribe to our YouTube channel. All about push rod length. Peace out. <laughs>